So just a little bit about me. My name is uh, Lori Nexel again, uh, speaker and strategic marketing advisor for uh, a business that I started uh, nine years ago now, uh, Immotivate Marketing and Design. I'm based in Ontario, Canada, uh, Stratford, Ontario to be more specific, and um, I'm also an uh, authorized local expert for content contacts. So I'm not an employee, but I, I do wear the hat of going around and speaking quite passionately actually about um, constant contact and speaking to people about using social media and email marketing for their businesses. Um, so uh, please connect with me if you like. There's some uh, some of the networks that I'm and uh, let's get underway. So uh, the thing that I, one of the things I like the most about constant contact is that the reason that they do what they do is because they feel that with the a few of the, the right tools in hand that every small business person can be a marketer. So that's the reason that I love Constant Contact so much and it's the reason I do these seminars and it's the reason that they are in business. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, hopefully over the course of this uh, seminar, uh, the webinar today will, uh, will reveal some ideas for you that are going to help you with marketing your own business because I know a lot of us, like myself as well, are one-person operations where we're wearing many hats. So efficiency is key and having the right tools in place is key. So um, I talk a lot in, in uh, seminars and I know a lot of our constant contact counterparts talk about the fact that marketing has changed. Um, before you invested a lot of time in finding uh, your, or your clients, so you spread the net really wide and then you were able to invest less time, energy and money in converting, um, even less in, in keeping. But now the, the marketing funnel has been flipped, um, which is fantastic news for us. Um, so we're, uh, because of the nature, the viral nature of digital marketing uh, with email marketing and social media in particular, uh, we're able to spend a lot less time, energy, and money finding people. And when we do meet these people or when they have their first encounter with us, the relationship is usually warm because they've been referred to us by somebody else. They found us on uh, social media. Um, they signed up for our uh, newsletter. So by the time they get to our store or they contact us to ask about our services or they volunteer for us or whatever the nature of your business is, they already know a bit about us, which is really nice because it saves us uh, that time, energy, and money to invest into converting them or clients or volunteers or sponsors and, and really spend the bulk of our, our efforts on keeping them and creating that repeat sales cycle or the repeat cycle and, and also enhancing the referral cycle. Um, so, so that really bodes well for us as small business people. So a little bit about your online presence. Um, this slide I've, I've created for myself because, um, you know, the online presence used to be predicated solely on your website and search engine optimization measure, measures that you use, the content you had on your website, how many people were visiting it, and that still plays a big role. But now with the emergence of these other pieces, it's only a part of the picture, still a very important part. Um, I am a, a website designer and developer and, and um, this does definitely play still an important role because I think at the end of the day, when you're searching for a company, you still want that soft place to land, which is for me, the website. Uh, if I find somebody on Facebook, I still want to eventually get to their website area uh, just to find out more about them and have kind of a comprehensive picture of them. Uh, but the difference between all these pieces and the reason that you, you should be using all of these pieces is that website is in, so you're relying on people to come to you, to find you. So whether that's through a Google search, uh, they find you on social media and, and get directed back to your site or they hear about you in, the, in a newsletter or what have you, um, they're having to visit your website. Uh, social media, on the other hand, is two-way engagement, so it's highly conversational. And I've, I've seen a lot of statistics lately that are showing you know, people aren't looking necessarily to be marketed to with social media, but rather they want access to you. So they want that 
um, ability to have a conversation with you if need be. And I know that I use social media that way as well for the for the brands that I follow. So um, so it's highly conversational, uh, great communication, uh, great engagement tool. Uh, email marketing is kind of the opposite uh, with uh, of um, of your website. It's outbound marketing, so it's targeted. People are giving you. Uh, permission to add them to your mailing list and to market to them directly, which is gold. You cannot get better than that when people are saying, yes, please, reach out to me directly, send stuff to my inbox, I want to learn more. Uh, the beauty of it is, is that they all work together and they should be fully integrated. So, um, you know, you can get people on your website, you can have your social media links, you can have feeds for your various social media networks, and you can also have a subscription area for a call to action to join your mailing list on your website. Um, you should be driving traffic to your website from both social media and from your newsletters uh, to link your newsletter and social media together as well so that you um, Constant Contact actually has the option for you to add a join my mailing list tab to your Facebook business page, for example, uh, but also every so often when you're posting on social media, you want to say, hey, just talked about this in my newsletter, uh, sign up here kind of thing. Uh, and similarly, from your newsletter, you want to link to your social media feeds, and uh, we'll talk about uh, that integration a little bit more uh, later as we walk through this. So. And just a reminder for everybody, or I don't believe I've let you know yet, uh, you will be getting all of these slides uh, after the webinar today. So uh, sit tight, make some notes if you like, but do know that you are going to be getting this, uh, this in a PDF format. Um, uh, so a little bit about um, just some terms that uh, we'll be using today. And the first is, and this is fairly straightforward, but just making sure that we're all on the same page, uh, contact is an individual contact, um, you know, the minimum I'd say that you ask for is obviously you need their email address so you can't reach out to them. But beyond that, I would say you want to collect people's first name uh, and possibly last name. But the first name is important because that allows you then to personalize your greetings when you're sending emails. So it looks like an email that's just coming to them because it'll say, hi, John, and then go on with the body of the email. So uh, I like uh, to ensure that I get both email and at, at the very least first name. On the flip side of that, I would say don't collect more information than you need because it tends to be off-putting. Um, I always say the golden rule, when, you think of when, you're, when you're going through your various marketing strategies and implementing them, always use the golden rule. So think about what would make you uncomfortable and then don't do that, basically. Um, fairly straightforward. Uh, the email list is a collection of contacts, a collection of people's email addresses. And the nice thing about using a platform like contact, and I know a number of you are already constant contact users, which is fantastic, um, is that you can segment your list. You can create multiple lists. You can add uh, one person to different, different lists so that you can really target your audience based on what your message is. And then a campaign is the email marketing, the message or promotion that you're sending out. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's the start to finish of that campaign. It's not just the email itself. It's the strategy behind it. It includes the subject line and the, and the from name. It includes the message and, and what your email looks like, the aesthetics, of course. And uh, it also includes, though, the uh, follow-up afterwards, the uh, analysis, looking at the metrics um, to see who's interacting with your email so that you can better understand what content is working and who kind of your VIPs are, who's, who's really uh, paying attention to your content on an ongoing basis. So a couple stats here about uh, email. 91% of people check their email daily. I actually think that stat is a little low. I, I'm surprised it's not 100%. Um, but, uh, you know, I understand there are uh, people who are email averse and there are other people who maybe when they're traveling or, you know, if their day is busy, they don't get around to it. But uh, I'm an email checker myself. 82% uh, sign up for email on brand websites. So that's important. Uh, think about um, if, if you have a, an email newsletter already uh, and a subscription list, how are you building that list? Do you have a function from your email that allows people to easily subscribe? Because 82% of people, when asked, will subscribe to your list. 
pop-ups are a great way to catch people's attention. I know some people, they're, they're widely held as annoying, but at the same time, they're highly effective. So think about that if you, if you control your website or have a web designer who could add a, a pop-up for you. Um, it's, it's not usually terribly difficult, uh, and it can uh, reap some uh, additional benefits in terms of growing your email list that much quicker. Um, also, 72% of uh, people sign up expecting a discount. Now, this stat's a little bit uh, skewed, I would say, because um, not all of us are in a business to offer a discount necessarily. If we're a not-for-profit and we're doing fundraising or we're recruiting volunteers or whatever the case might be, I'm a service-based business and typically we have we offer uh, we don't offer discounts necessarily for retail. Obviously, this is highly applicable, um, but it is interesting to note that 72% of people sign up because they've either been incentivized that they'll get a discount when they sign up, or um, the one of the one of the promises uh, for email content going forward is that they'll learn about discounts on particular products and services. In addition to that. Uh, Email marketing has the highest ROI of any digital marketing uh, strategy or channel. 4425 return on every dollar invested in email marketing. That's pretty incredible. So, you know, it's uh, one, it's a great thing that you're already doing email marketing if you, if you are and that you're caring enough to uh, improve your efforts. Um, and if you're here, here and you're not doing email marketing yet, I guess that's a, a great testament to uh, maybe why you should try it out. Uh, I've been using email marketing for about 12 years. I used it corporately and then it was the first tool I added to my belt and in fact it was Constant Contact because I love their user interface and found their support fantastic. So um, I've been using it for about 12 years and I really, um, I, I find that I, I never get bored of it. They're always innovating with the product and I'm constantly learning new things. Um, how I can do better, and it's highly effective. So that said, the final stat here, email marketing, three times higher conversion rate than social media. A quick note about uh, the difference between email marketing and social media as far as your list goes. A lot of people think that um, when people are liking their page on social media or following them on social media, that they can then market to those people. And they can, they're not mistaken there, but they don't own the list of contacts. In fact, when somebody likes your um, Facebook page, for example, what they're really doing is they're not giving you permission at all. They're giving Facebook permission to include your posts from your business page in their stream. And that's where the relationship ends. They're not giving you permission to reach out to them via email or even via uh, direct message or private message through, through Facebook. Uh, so keep that in mind with email marketing. When somebody gives you the permission to add you to their list, they are giving you explicit permission um, that is uh, compliant with CASEL and CAN-SPAM regulations. Um, they're giving you permission to reach out to them directly so you own that list. Uh, if Facebook or Twitter or what have you, if they change their rules, they change their algorithms, all of a sudden who's seeing your posts and when and how often can, can completely flip and you have no control over that. So social media is a fantastic channel. I don't think there's any question there, but just keep that in mind in, t in terms of list ownership. So we're going to uh, walk through this agenda here. Start with what you've got, make it work for you, collect more from everywhere you are. Um, you really want to just be where your audience is. That, that makes the most sense. It sounds very straightforward, but sometimes when we're in business, we're so um, you know, busy doing what we got to do that we don't think very simply like that. You know, where are my customers? Where can I meet them? Where can I uh, you know, put a call to action to join my mailing list? And then you've got an email address, now what? So that's the follow-up to this to really leverage your list to take it to the next step and some next steps as well. So growing your list can sound complicated. Um, I know that a lot of people's brows furrow when we talk about list growth um, because other than collecting the odd uh, business card or, or email at the cash register, people are really at a loss as to 
um, solid uh, and multiple consistent ways to, to collect email addresses. Um, but it's, it's really not complicated. There's a few things you want to understand. One, be patient. Growth takes time. Um, and I would rather see you grow a list, and I, I tell this to all my clients, I would rather see you grow, grow a list that has 10 people who are really engaged than 100 people that just signed up to possibly win a prize or, you know, they're otherwise not terribly engaged. And it's an ongoing process. So what we're talking about today is, is measures that you can put in place and that, that are evergreen, that will be there and a lot of them will be passive so that you're not having to manage everything. And that's the beauty of using an email marketing platform like Constant Contact is it's all offhand. So you don't have to manage the, the list growth. It, it happens automatically and you can just get reports sent to you every time somebody uh, subscribes and or on a kind of a digest basis where they send you something like once weekly to let you know uh, subscriptions, unsubscriptions, et cetera, et cetera. Also, you want to make sure that your efforts are organized and consistent. And I actually, um, during the registration process, a couple of you said that you're struggling to be consistent with your list growth strategies. So um, we'll talk about that as well uh, more towards the end of today's session. But you want to make sure that you keep things organized and that, um, that you know where your calls to action are so that you can adjust them at any time. If you have a, a sale or if you want to uh, change your call to action and incentivize it, you want to be consistent across all the different channels that you're using to grow your list. And finally, a combination of traditional and more contemporary or modern methods uh, tends to work best. So uh, I would say, you know, tradi versus traditional and modern, I would say on online and offline methods. So, you know, if you're, um, do, if you're printing um, business cards, you can put a QR code or a call to action or a link on the back of your business card that says join our mailing list. You can put it, if you're, if you're a cafe or a restaurant, you can put it on your tent cards or your menus. Um, if you're a downtown retail business, if you have a sandwich board, you can put it there. Posters, flyers, newspaper ads, even if you use magazine, you can include calls to action in all of those places. So, and even a radio spot if you were doing that. Um, I know we're talking about traditional media and traditional media tends to be prohibitively expensive for a lot of us as small business people. But if you, you, are, if you are using any of those channels, continue to use them and just add a call to action in there to join your mailing list and a quick little um, uh, compelling statement as to why people would want to join your mailing list, what's in it for them basically. And then of course, the online methods or the more contemporary methods, um, social media, website, blog, um, uh, podcast, uh, video or vlog, and um, webinars like this one, um, and et cetera, et cetera. And your mailing list, or, or so your email campaigns themselves, uh, you can use those to grow your list. And um, speaking of that, one of, the, um, one of the bonuses that I'll be sending you after today's webinar to all of the participants is a quick little guide, 50 Ways to Grow Your List, which will have a nice combination of online and offline methods that you can take a look at. There's no one person that I've ever run into who's able to use all 50 of these suggestions, but rather what I'd like to see you do is quickly, you know, scan the list, Consider the ones that are going to work best for your business and put them into action. Um, again, kind of like uh, uh, like anything else, I'd rather see um, you pick a couple and use them really well than try to do you know 10 or 20 of them at one time. Of course, it's not unheard of to use that many, but start out you know start where you are and, and do what's going to be most efficient and effective for you. So with your list building, as I mentioned before, you want to start where you are. So do you have, do you send emails every day? I'm sure that you do. Do you have a website? Most of us do. Do you use social media? Again, most of us are on at least one social media network. So one of my favorite ways to grow my list is by adding a call to action to the signature line of my emails. Not my email campaigns, but my standard emails that I send out through my business email address. 
Think about how many emails you send in a day. That's passive promotion of your mailing list to, you know, tens if not hundreds of people daily. So they might not even subscribe right away, but at least it plants a seed that you have a mailing list and they might consider subscribing at a later date. Of course, we talked about uh, using your website to grow your mailing list and social media as well. Um, you know, post your email campaigns if you're already uh, in newsletter mode and you've, you've got a newsletter on the go, post your newsletters with a link to the subscription page so that people can, can join your list. It's as easy as that. Just make sure you're taking care of the, all of those kind of fundamental places where you can be go growing your list and ask people to subscribe. For an incentive, an incentive is a great uh, way to boost the growth of your mailing list or the rate of growth. Um, not unheard of at all. We all can think of examples of incentivized building campaigns that we've actually um, taken, or, or sorry, that we've uh, signed up for. Um, so you think of retail stores at Christmas time, um, you know, anything where you're, they're offering a discount or, you know, um, a, a free something or other. It might be a download, it might be a gift with purchase or whatever, just for signing up for their mailing list. So, um, you know, for those of you who haven't really started with your mailing list, another thing you want to do is obviously locate and contact so you have them in one place. Um, you know, if you're collecting business cards, if you have a form on the desk or the counter um, at your place of business, if you have a number of emails where people have said, yeah, I'd like to hear from you, sign me up kind of thing, you want to make sure that you have those all in one place so you can add them to your database quickly and efficiently. So organize them all into one place, figure out who's giving you permission because that uh, will ensure that you're tax compliant and then you can go from there. So before you start growing your list, a few things that you want to make sure that you do and I just discussed organizing your database into lists so that you're segmenting your list. One of the main reasons that people uh, unsubscribe from a mailing list is they're being sent irrelevant content, content that they weren't expecting to get and that isn't relevant to them or their business. Uh, so that drives home the point that we want to be very targeted with our emails. So target by customer interest. Create that sign up form um, and Constant Contact has a sign up form, a default sign up form that you can go in and easily customize with your uh, logo and a custom message that tells people, you know, gives them an idea of maybe the frequency of your email campaigns as well as what they can expect to receive from you. And then add an embeddable sign-up form to your website or blog. So it's either going to be a button, like a call to action, a link, and or an actual form that they can, without even leaving your website, without clicking a button going to another window, they can actually just fill in their information right on your website, which is lovely for you because it keeps them on your website instead of redirecting them. And Constant Contact recently introduced an embeddable sign-up form that you can use right in your website. Uh, again, if you, if you have access to your own website or you have a web designer, it's not a tough thing to create an embeddable sign-up form. Very quickly done and uh, can help you grow your list right from your site. And as I said before, make sure you add that join my mailing list uh, link to your email signature. Easy to do. All of us use email. Think about how many emails you send in a day and um, it'll make sense. So uh, just uh, one of those things you can do quickly and easily and link to that uh, sign up form that you've created. Uh, set up a QR code and add it to printed material. So I briefly touched on the QR code before. You can add your, uh, you can create a QR code right in Constant Contact for those of you who use the program. Uh, other email marketing platforms might offer this as well, I'm not sure. Um, but you can create a QR code either through Constant Contact or if your platform doesn't allow it, you can actually just look up QR code generator and plug the link to your form in there and it'll create one for you. Um, but you create that code and then send it to your designer or send it along with your, embed it into your artwork if you do your own design um, and, and print the QR code for people to scan. QR code uh, use is actually uh, experiencing a resurgence right now. So when they first came out, the software, the QR code scanners weren't terribly reliable. So it's 
uh, it seemed to be a passing fad, but they seem to be making a resurgence. Again, still they're not used by everybody, but I have uh, an iPhone actually, and it has a, a QR, I, I downloaded a QR code scanner, and it's extremely reliable, and I, I always use it just to test out how it works. It's 100% reliable, and um, and fun. And people who are tied to the mobile devices, again, that number is on the rise as well, um, want instant gratification. So the QR code is a great way for them to just open up their scanner, scan it, take them to the web, or take them to the web page. And in this case, they can easily sign up for your, um, your newsletter right there, even if they're just looking at your menu or a flyer or a poster, which is fantastic. Uh, set up the Facebook. Uh, join app as well to facilitate people being able to sign up for your mailing list right from Facebook. And then download an app, um, and again, it depends on which platform you're using, but for those who are using Constant Contact, download the Constant Contact app so that if you're chatting with somebody at a networking event or if you meet somebody on the street or whatever the case is, you're meeting with a client, whatever, you can add them right there and then from your mobile phone or your mobile device, your, whether it's a, a tablet or, or a phone, um, you can add them to capture content, contacts on the go rather than getting a business card from them, um, getting verbal uh, permission, and then having to go back and manually add them later. So um, if, you ha if you have a business that, um, where you have staff, you're not a, a one-person shop, you want to be consistent. So train your staff to ask at the point of sale, over the phone. If your business, uh, a lot of your business is done over the phone, um, use a sign-up link and employee, in employee email signatures. So you know, taking that a step further, where anybody who has a business uh, email using the the domain name for your business, make sure that their email signatures all include a link to your sign-up form, and also offer staff. Uh, that same app that I was just talking about so that they can gather new contacts on the go as well. Of course, this varies business to business. Some of us, it, this might not be highly applicable because, you know, because of either the nature of our business or the fact that we just don't have staff. But regardless of what uh, your business is, be consistent across the board with asking for uh, people to subscribe to your email list. Uh, it is something that just is a matter of of a habit, a habit forming. You have to get into the habit of, of asking. And print advertising is not dead. Um, you know, it, it is um, more expensive than digital advertising typically, but it's great, as I mentioned before, to tie print advertising or traditional media in with newer forms of media online. So it's not dead, it just leaves the internet and you want to make sure that it does because you want to ensure that you know, if somebody's in your store or meeting with you or if you run into them at a networking event, that's not the end of your conversation with them. So, you know, get that, uh, get the permission that you need, make it as easy as possible for them to join your mailing list so that you can continue that conversation online even after they've visited you or you've met with them. And, you know, it can be as simple as a form at your counter, your, your desk, or, you know, if you have kind of a, a, a brick and mortar business where people are coming to your location frequently, then it can be as simple as just putting a form uh, on your desk and asking people to subscribe there. It doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, there, is, there is an app that you can download from iContact um, that I'll show you, just, uh, I'll, I'll mention it again a little later, but um, you could have an iPad at the front desk so that people can add their information electronically and then it automatically gets added to your database and there's no transcribing after the fact. But, you know, if you're looking for just simple, straightforward and you've got some time, just do it this way. I mean, the bottom line is just get the contact information. So, you know, looking at the contacts that you have and, and when you start to build your list, then you want to make those, you want to make the most of that list. And that comes from segmentation and targeting. Um, so, you know, you look at all of the people and there are different ways that you can segment them into relevant um, groups so that each email that you send out can be targeted to those, specifically to those 
that to, to whom it's highly applicable. So, you know, you might have some regular customers or donors. Those could be included in one group, for example. Then you've got others who are only seasonal customers or supporters. So you see them once a year. It could be Christmas time. It could be, you know, birthday. It could be for a regular scheduled appointment, um, whatever the case is. Um, but you might see them less frequently, but guaranteed you're seeing them once or twice a year. Then there are others who are your VIPs. Not only do they visit you or purchase from you regularly or engage with you regularly, but they also are advocates of yours. So they're spreading your good word to other people. So those you want to add to a separate list. They might be on one or two of these other lists as well, but you want to make sure that they're on a separate uh, VIP list so that uh, you, um, you can interact with them accordingly. And finally, um, new customers, new donors, new clients, uh, you know, somebody that's just joined you, you might want to put a, a quick um, automated campaign together that drips out information and gives them more details about the upcoming event that they've just registered for or, um, you know, more about similar products to the one that they've just purchased from you or other opportunities to volunteer with your organization um, because they've just volunteered with you for the first time. So, you know, that might be new is, is, uh, is relative depending on our business, but, you know, it might be the first six months of engagement and then you move them over to the regular customers and donors or one of the other lists. So, um, yeah, that, that is uh, one way that you can segment. Um, another uh, way that you can segment is, you know, say that you've got um, an animal-oriented business, whether it's a vet clinic or a grooming or um, pet supply store, what have you. Um, you can segment by the type of animal that they own, for example, so that, again, so you're targeting. And, of course, this is just an example, but think about the product, service, um, or what, whatever it is that you're in business to do, what you offer, and think about how you might target your lists or segment your lists better to, to better target them. And then what you can do is, um, I know for me I've got multiple, multiple lists in my constant contact account. Many of them um, I don't show, they're for my own purposes, but for those lists that you're creating um, for segmenting your audience, um, make sure that you include them on your sign-up form, which is just when you're, when you're customizing your sign-up form, you can check off the list you want to include on your form. And then people can select what they're interested in. Again, you want this to be as passive a process as possible so that people are able to select for themselves what lists they want to be added to, what information they want to, what types of information they want to hear from you. And speaking of lists, make sure that you're not buying lists. I know in the past it's been, um, it's been okay, it's been kosher to do that. Uh, one, you spend big money for it, but two, it's not castle compliant and it's certainly not marketing best practice. It, again, um, talking about, you know, the, the 10 high quality contacts versus the 100 low quality contacts, the, the former is the better option. Take the time to build your list and build that reputation of trust and familiarity with people, um, you know, based on a, a permission that they've given you to be added to their list. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, this is compliant uh, conduct with, uh, according to both CASEL and CANSPAM, CASEL being the Canadian any spam legislation and, and uh, CANSPAM being the American any spam legislation. And I will chat about that a little bit more later and I will be sending you some additional resources later as well um, having to do with uh, with CASEL and CANSPAM and I know uh, a few of you when you signed up had asked about um, permissions and how they seem to be changing all the time and is there a resource that we can consult with that will uh, you know tell us kind of the definitive lowdown on what we need um, to be doing and to, to include um, when we're getting permission from people. So uh, we'll chat about that a bit later and I'll follow up with you afterwards as well. So here you see the end result of that segmentation process. Um, you can add one person to multiple lists 
uh, so that you know one some of your contacts might be on all of your lists, but other contacts are only on one or two maybe. So, um, but again, that segmentation really helps you to keep people engaged and deliver the information that that is relevant to each of them. So, we want to be where we are. We want to collect um, uh, contact information from the places that we are, as I mentioned before. So there's a few ideas here um, when you think about how you do business, how you network. Um, always be thinking about opportunities for growing your list, mentioning, you know, come up with that elevator speech that really solidifies in your mind and other people's minds what they're going to get when they sign up for your list. What kind of information are they going to get from you? How is it going to help them personally and or professionally? And you know, maybe how often are they going to expect to hear from you? If you're a retail store, you know, more frequent uh, emails is not unheard of. Um, you know, at Christmas time, you think about some of the newsletters you get. You're getting them daily, which you know is a little much, maybe. But you know, it, your audience is going to to show you uh, what they can bear. Uh, I think mon monthly is definitely the most common frequency. I send out uh, monthly e-marketing tips, just short tips to help small business owners uh, kind of rethink their email marketing. Um, so, you know, if, if you're sending monthly, that is, that is you're, you're kind of in the majority. But some ideas here, um, some giving, you know, you want to give and get cards. And again, I mentioned before, instead of taking someone's business card, or if you don't want to insult them by turning down their business card, but rather, you know, in addition to getting their business card, pull up your app and add their information right away if they give you permission to join your mailing list. Um, also, make sure that you upload any information that you get offline, upload it immediately to your database. Uh, again, um, you know, there's, there's apps for that. Um, there's, if, you, if you collect business cards uh, routinely, I have an app on my phone car called Cam Card, and uh, it scans the card pulls all the uh, information, name, contact information, et cetera, into a database so that it's added to my contacts automatically and I don't have to type all of the information in. So check out apps that allow you to scan either a form in, like a, an OCR app, um, or uh, that allow you to scan a business card in. Um, it's amazing uh, the different things that you can get apps for these days. You can pretty much get an app to do anything for you. Um, but, you know, it's important for efficiency, especially when, when we're talking about one person, you know, small businesses, sole proprietorships, et cetera. Um, we've got a lot of hats to wear, a lot of stuff to do in a day. Um, add new contacts to an automation series. So for those of you who are already uh, doing some email marketing, you might want to try an automation series if you haven't yet where you set up autoresponders to drip information to people on a specific list um, on an, uh, automatically so that you don't have to manage that. So you just set up the content and it goes out to them maybe once a week, maybe once every few days, whatever the case is, so they get that whole series of emails. Um, automation is fantastic for um, continuing to engage your, your customers and people on your mailing list without having to always actively have to manage that. Attend meetup groups or other networking opportunities like uh, SCORE or Chamber of Commerce events. I know um, in these parts we have BA5s with chambers, so I attend my local Business After Five events. A uh, great network networking opportunity um, there. And also local events. Think about what local events you could attend where you have stuff in common or it's a local event where your business is highly relevant and you could potentially be prospecting for new clients there. You want to get those people uh, on your mailing list. So, you know, casually but um, and, and succinctly uh, give that elevator speech about why they should join your mailing list. And clarify how people can join your mailing list online. So, uh, you know, the Facebook business page, um, Twitter, you can, you can add these, add a link to any of your online social media profiles, add a link to your, your mailing list. And this is something that I've actually just been kind of reviewing all of my profiles online for Google+, for Pinterest, for 
LinkedIn, for Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, making sure that they all consistently mention uh, emotivate.tips so people can go and sign up to your mailing list. Again, every passive form of, of um, you know, uh, list growth or list build, building strategies that you can uh, take advantage of, I highly encourage doing that. So look at these different uh, things here that are online, um, that are kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing um, that allow you to um, boost your, your list building uh, capabilities. That's uh, that you want to be taking advantage of all of those. And wherever you are, don't forget to ask. So again, this is a bit of a reiteration, but your website, blog, online listings, Facebook business page, social media platforms, Instagram, Pinterest, bio pages. Um, you know, ideas here abound for different places where you can mention the, the call to action and also, you know, what's in it for them, which is key. <clears throat> so, for example, with your website, um, I, I just want to show something to you very quickly. This is just a, a, a screenshot of my home page of my website. Um, you want your call to action to be um, kind of stand apart from the rest of the text on your website. You also want it to be above what's called the scroll line so that people see it as soon as they come to your website. I mentioned the pop-ups, great strategy, something you can certainly try if, if, uh, if you have the means. Um, on that, either just a text link or a, a button graphic um, that is in the, the top uh, area above the scroll line so people see it right away. From there, that will lead to your mailing list, and from there, that leads, should lead to an automatic welcome message. Don't overlook, don't overlook the opportunity to, um, to uh, reach out to people right away with your, your message, welcoming them. There's a couple reasons to do that. One, you want to engage right away when somebody joins your mailing list, but the other is that you, um, Oh, sorry, I've lost my train of thought, my goodness. You want to engage with them right away, um, but you want to also demonstrate to them that you did, in fact, receive their subscription information because a lot of times people will click a link um, to register, to sign up, what have you, and nothing happens. So the welcome email serves those two purposes. So just some ideas here for collecting your information. And again, I, I'm sending that document to you, that ebook, um, 50 Ways to Grow Your List. So um, these are just a sampling of the different ideas that you might be able to implement for your individual businesses. And if you're not sure what to offer as incentives, again, um, you know, we're not all product-based businesses, so sometimes um, what to offer as an incentive uh, is a bit, of, a bit tricky. So obviously, gift swag, percentage off, um, special offer code, those things are fairly straightforward um, and work really well for retail. Um, if you're more in, you know, in the business of intellectual property or if you're service-oriented, uh, service an e-book, a white paper, a guide, uh, you know, like my, the 50 ways to grow your list, Something like that can incentivize people to join your list just to get that information. And that information is, is very valuable to them. So, um, you know, don't discount uh, intellectual property as a great way to incentivize. Um, likewise, an exclusive video link. So, you know, if you put a video together that's only for your VIP members or new subscribers or what have you. And then also, you know, possibly a small sampling of your service that you offer. Um, just to demonstrate your capabilities and also provide some value to people, um, then they'll, they may want to take it to the next level after that point. So a little bit about, you know, that's great. I've got my list. I'm building my list. What do I do with it? Um, you know, I mentioned using automation campaigns and a couple, couple stats there. 79% um, of consumers said they like or follow brands for information about the company. So it's, it's important that you get that welcome email out and then, you know, where appropriate, get them into a, an autoresponder 
um, series that's relevant to their business or the interest that they've indicated so that they can get more information um, about you know your business, their business, um, something they're trying to accomplish. And 89% of consumers turn to search engines to research products or services before purchasing. So the different types of campaigns here that you might like to try, um, you know, thinking about content and the different topics and you know, I can't, uh, one thing you want to stay away from is constant self-promotion. You want to be adding value for your subscribers and self-promotion should be only about 20% of your overall activity with your, with your mailing list. You're trying to build a relationship, develop some trust, add value to their business and uh, connect them with other people, um, demonstrate that your activity in the community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, engage with people and then like I said about the last 20% of, of what you do is going to be direct sales. That's not to say that all of those activities won't necessarily lead to sales. They're just not hardcore sales techniques or, or you know shameless self-promotion constantly. So there's a few ideas for different types of campaigns that you might like to try. Some of those are seasonally based or annually based. Um, others are, are based on current events, um, you know, how-to list, top 10 list, uh, DIY, those kinds of things are super, super hot right now. So, you know, if you think about um, a how-to uh, anecdote or, or story that you can come up with that's relevant to your business and to your, your subscribers, that would go over really well, I think. And never forget to inject a bit of humor into your uh, email campaigns. Um, everybody appreciates that and it's highly engaging as long as it's not the only purpose for your email campaign or campaigns. So three fundamental considerations when you're putting campaigns together. The first is spam. We've talked about it. Um, any spam legislation is there to protect us. Most of us are just trying to do our business and we're not trying to spam people. So really the, the the basis for any spam legislation is permission. Make sure that you have pre people's permission before you start sending them emails. Again, looking at you know 10 highly engaged people versus 100 that aren't terribly engaged. Second is social integration. So, um, uh, Constant Contact offers three different ways that you can integrate with social media. The first is a social share bar. Um, top of every email campaign that allows you um, to, it allows your readers to be able to share your email with their networks. The second is uh, your social media link to your network so people can you can ask people to connect with you on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. And the third is uh, when you're sending out your emails you can schedule your emails to um, be po posted automatically to your social media um, feeds, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook are the options in Constant Contact. Again, if you're not using Constant Contact, um, consult with your particular platform that you're using and uh, see what the capabilities are there. And the last one is mobile responsiveness. Uh, last year, for the first time, mobile consumption of content, including emails, uh, exceeded desktop consumption. So you want to make sure that your uh, emails look good screen sizes. So uh, use a mobile responsive template, Constant Contact. Almost all of their templates now are mobile responsive, so there's a wide selection there. So they automatically uh, will be reconfigured um, to, the, to fit the size of the screen that they're being viewed on. So all those are very important. And some simple content ideas for people who are wondering, okay, what do I write about? Um, you know, and this just delves a little deeper into the, the campaign ideas. Um, Internet research, I do a lot of that, so I like to share that with my uh, audience. Um, marketing materials, so if you've um, got marketing materials, um, collateral, stuff that helps describe what you do and the products that you offer. Um, maybe it's new products, um, press releases that have gone out that are relevant to your business or, or mention your business. Uh, industry news, uh, again, something that I send out a lot to keep people abreast of what's happening with Castle, with web design, uh, with digital marketing, um, trends, et cetera, et cetera. Competitor news, so stay on top of what your competitors are doing. Take a look at what they're doing, what's working. Um, and also, don't forget to mention 
that you do what your competitors do too so that they're not tempted to go elsewhere. Make sure that you're always letting them know the latest and greatest of the products and services that you're offering. Community events, national news, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, you'll be getting these slides so you can refer to these ideas again later, but lots of great ideas here. And always check the calendar. So beyond the big holidays in November and December, there's a lot of kind of lesser known uh, days that happen, happen. This is just during the fall month. Um, uh, so, you know, be aware of that and see if there are any tie-ins with your business that, uh, that you can um, kind of uh, draw on when you're putting together your content. Um, and, and even beyond that, um, there's a great site called nationaldaycalendar.com. And uh, you can go any day of any month of any year. Well, sorry, this is it's an ongoing recurring thing. So any day of any month, you can go and find two to five different days that people are celebrating that day. And a lot of them are quirky and funny. But um, uh, And yes, if you're wondering, there are a few today. So today is National Anthem Day, according to this website. It is also National I Want You to Be Happy Day. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch. But it's also National Cold Cuts Day and National Mold Wine Day. So there's some, uh, some food for thought right there, no pun intended. So, um, you know, there's, there's resources like this and you can have fun with it. Again, playing on the, uh, you know, adding some, injecting some humor into your, into your emails. I, I like to mention these during um, the beginning of uh, some of my seminars that I do as well just to uh, lighten the mood and get people talking about, uh, you know, whatever the, the topic at hand is for the, whatever we're celebrating that day. So some next steps for you very quickly. Um, you know, find your contacts, organize your contacts, segment your lists. Uh, that's key. Target your campaigns. Make sure your collect collection methods are ready and that they're functioning well. And then create and schedule your welcome email so that when somebody is added to your list, where they subscribe, they're getting that welcome email right away. And also create a schedule to keep you on, uh, on task with sending out regular emails to your audience. So this is just an offer um, from Constant Contact that I can help you with um, um, if you want to get started. If you're not a current Constant Contact uh, member, um, custom design email template. So for those of you um, who haven't started yet, I know sometimes this can be kind of a, a something that stops you in your tracks before you even get started. So you get the custom uh, template. And then you can get started sending your your campaigns right away. You help you get help with your um, initial if, uh, list upload, excuse me, and configuration. Um, you'll get a getting started guide and access to video tutorials, and then also uh, an invitation to a live how-to webinar. And actually, right now, uh, Constant Contacts offering an invitation to an exclusive webinar just for new subscribers. Um, that's called Three Essentials for Quick and Compelling Emails. So that helps you put together not only effective emails, but do so quickly so you can get back to doing what you do, what your core business is. Um, pricing, just so you know, starts at $20 a month. Uh, there's chamber discounts. There's nonprofit discounts. Um, there's prepaid discounts. If you pay for six months or a year at a time, you can get up to 15% off. Chamber discounts, 25% off, and nonprofits, 35% or 30% off. Sorry, uh, there is a 60-day free trial. Um, let me know if you want a free trial. I can set you up with that. I'm happy to help you with that. And there is a money-day guarantee, a 30-day money guarantee, 30-day uh, money-back guarantee. Um, um, for current customers, if you're already started, um, I'd like to offer you a complimentary account review. So the things that I'll be looking at specifically are. are um, our CASEL or CAMPAM compliance, um, social media integration, making sure that you're completely integrated with social media to uh, maximize your reach with your, with your newsletters, um, and also make sure that you're mobile responsive so that everybody's able to see your emails and they look nice and pretty in people's inboxes regardless of what device they're looking at your email on, and also looking at any opportunities for cost savings for you, uh, depending on the way that your account is configured and what offers Constant Contact has on the table right now. And all participants of today's webinar will receive uh, this slide deck, links to additional information, uh, anti spam social mobile, uh, and also the ebook that I mentioned before, 50 Ways to Grow Your List. 
So I would like to at this time just ask if, if there are any questions. I know that uh, we're a bit over because we got started a bit late, so my apologies for that. But if you do have a question, I'd uh, be happy to field feel those now for you. I'm just going to take a look and see. Um, somebody asked if I'll be sharing the presentation. Yes, I will be, happily. Thanks for your question. Wayne asks, when you upload your contacts beyond name and email, what other key fields should be focused on? Wayne, that really depends on your business and what you're going to be using the contact information for. Uh, you know, you might want to ask age range um, so that you can better target your emails. Um, you know, there's no end to the the fields. You can you can customize the fields when you go into your subscription form and ask for information. So um, you know if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna take this conversation offline and just send me a quick email and let me know what your business is, we could quickly uh, brainstorm what uh, what the ideal uh, questions would be for you, the ideal fields or the information that you want to collect. Um, like I said, first name and email is the bare minimum. Um, you want to make those required fields. Maybe the other ones are fields that are, you know, the information is nice to have but not absolutely necessary. So, um, you know, keep that in mind that you can set which fields are required for them to subscribe and which ones are, uh, are ask them to, to fill out the field but it's not a requirement um, for them to subscribe um, because collecting additional information can certainly help you to better target your email campaigns. Uh, Wayne, does that sound okay to you? Yep. Basic profiling approach. Uh, Dave asks, if you ask someone to be on your email list through Facebook, if they say yes, does that mean automatic permission and how do you record that? Great question, Dave. Um, this is a castle question. So regardless of where you're collecting um, permission from, it might be, you know, it might be face-to-face, -face. it might be that somebody has actually um, said to you, yes, please add me to your list. You want to, as much as possible, uh, keep a solid record of that. So if somebody um, uh, subscribes through Facebook that they just said on, on a Facebook post or in a private comment, they said, yes, please add me to your mailing list, you actually have record of that, but what you could do is while you've got that message thread up, take a screenshot of it, plug that into, you know, save it as a JPEG or plug it into a Word document and save that document. Then you've got documentation that you've collected that information. Um, what I like to do when I'm at a, a networking event um, and people, you know, if I don't have my mobile phone nearby or whatever the case is and I'm talking about my mailing list and somebody says, yes, please add me, um, or if I meet with a client and they say, yes, please add me, um, I go back to my desk, add them right away, and send a follow-up email saying, great to see you today, enjoyed our chat, as, our, as discussed, I've added you to our mailing list, hope you enjoy the, the information, just wanted to confirm that you're, you're included now and you'll be receiving uh, an email from me shortly. That way you have an online, a digital thread that shows that, yes, one, the date that they've asked for, um, they've, they've given you permission, sorry, to, to join your mailing list and um, confirm that you have communicated to them that you've added them to the list. Um, uh, Dave, hopefully that answers your question a little bit. There's, uh, you always want to be keeping track. I have a folder in my email client that I use for, um, you know, if anybody, if I'm corresponding via email, uh, and I also have um, uh, a folder that I keep, you know, I hate paper, but if I do happen to have a form out at an event, if I'm doing a, you know, co-leading an event with somebody else and we just have forms out for people to subscribe, I take pictures of those um, and scan them in um, so that I've got proof and I can keep them in a file on my computer. Of course, you can always just keep a paper file in a filing cabinet or what have you. Okay? Um, Janet, as a current content contact client, how will I receive the evaluation you mentioned? Janet, uh, if you uh, want to follow up with me, email me at lori at emotivatemarketing.com and um, I can get some information from you and I'm happy to help you with that uh, 
review if that's what you're talking about and and that applies to anybody with a with a with a, a constant contact account if you'd like to email me at lori at emotivatemarketing.com that's l a u r i e and you see emotivate marketing there on the screen i'm happy to uh to help you out there thanks janet and uh, the double opt-in for CAFA compliance. Great question, Janet. Um, double opt-in is not a requirement uh, for CAFA right now, but it is marketing best practice. So um, for those of you who don't know what a do double opt-in is, you've probably experienced one. Uh, you've, you've been on the receiving end of a double opt-in um, strategy before. And all that is is um, when somebody subscribes to your list, an email gets sent to them saying, thanks for your interest in our list please uh, click here to confirm uh, that you'd like to subscribe. So um, that is called double opt-in, just to ensure that they're um, aware of, uh, hyper, super aware of uh, the fact that they're subscribing to your list and reminding, and, and you're just really covering your butt is, is what that is. Um, it gives you additional opportunity to engage with them uh, and then the whole uh, automated or welcome can can um, can begin. So uh, Janet, I'm not sure if you if you do a double opt-in right now. As I mentioned, it is not currently a CAFL requirement, but is marketing best practice. The problem with a double opt-in is that sometimes somebody will subscribe and they're surfing the web and you know they just get going, and then your email, um, the the double opt-in email, arrives in their inbox and they miss it or disregard it because they think they've already subscribed. So sometimes if you double opt in, you're going to be missing out on subscribers because they won't, if you are employing the double opt in strategy, they won't be added to your list until they confirm from that email. Make sense? So that's it for questions for me. I know we're a little over time here, but 10 after 12. So I, I really appreciate you all uh, joining me today, I hope that I'm able to share some information with you that you previously know and that you can employ with your business. So, thanks again, everybody, and and have a